You know, John, I, I really love practicalities. And here's three steps to finishing well. I love so it. So finishing well this year, but these are just finishing well, period. The Apostle Paul said to Tim, or Timothy, he said, preach the word. He said, rebuke, exhort, and correct. And then in one version, it says, you as a man of God are to show people in what ways their lives are wrong. Now, why would God want to do that? Why would he want us convicted? Not to because shame us. Because he wants to protect us. He wants to redirect us. He wants us, to yeah. protect us from the traps of life. And that's yeah. why we want to talk about finishing strong today, Lisa, whether it's in our entire life, whether it's for a season or whether it's for this year of 2021, it's really important that we talk about this because I find that <clears throat> we as ministers get in trouble when we whisper what God shouts and we shout what he whispers. And this is yeah. definitely not a whisper top topic. This is a Finishing shout. Finishing strong is not a I mean, Jesus topic. said, he who endures the end shall be saved. We see the apostle Paul in almost every single letter talking about, I mean, here's Colossians. Uh, he said, but you must continue to believe. Yeah. This truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away. You see the writers of Hebrews saying, we must pay careful attention to the word we've heard lest we drift away. Drifting never happens consciously. It happens subconsciously. And drifting happens without any effort. Yeah. So it's when you stop putting forth eff yep. effort that you begin to drift. So before so, you dive deeper, yes, can I just yes, say one thing? Absolutely. You know, I've been talking to some other, other leaders and I said, you know, most of us start out stupid. We, we start out stupid. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know how to be married. We don't know how to do ministry. We start out stupid, but we want to finish strong. We want to finish smart. So it's a shame when you start stupid and end stupid. We don't want to, we don't want to do that. We want to end strong and end smart. It's really a sad fact when you're strong and you go stupid. I mean, if you look at Solomon, that was a heartbreak. I mean, here the Lord appeared to him twice, David but yet he chooses not to endure and he ends up becoming a cynic. Mm. He every everything is jaded to him. What goes around comes around. Life is meaningless. That's Italian. What goes around comes around is is biblical. Well, that's actually was written in Ecclesiastes <laughs> first. But you know, Lisa, I, I I just find it amazing when you think about the fact that Christianity is an endurance run. It's it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to Hebrews chapter 12, I mean, this to me is amazing. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, and the witnesses he's talking about, the people who were stoned, they were beaten, they were sawn into, they were in desti destitute situations. Yeah. He said... Wait, these, can I just pause a second? It says, yeah. of whom this world was not Not worthy. worthy. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, and, they were And, and the heroes. way they endured the race was the faith that they had yep. in God. And, you know, faith has to be rooted in the character of God. I remember I got to a point one time in my life, Lisa, where quoting God's promise to me didn't, didn't, didn't feed my soul any longer. And I remember the only thing that fed me is to say, God, you're faithful. God, you're faithful. So well, encouraging our, yourself in God's character and faithfulness. Yeah, yeah. And I kept reminding myself of his character mm -hmm. and Reminding myself of his character was the foundation my faith didn't waver on. Mm -hmm. Because then I looked later, and when David was in one of his most desperate times, mm -hmm. he said these words, feed on his faithfulness. Wow. I thought, wow. And this happened after that happened with me, and I thought, wow, what a way to endure when you think about the character of God. So he goes on to say, he said, let us strip off every weight. Yeah. Now think about running an endurance run. So you're, we're, we're running a marathon. Well, can you imagine putting two 25-pound plates, like those things you lift in the gym, or 45-pound plates? Yeah. How about five-pound plates? Even five-pound yes. plates. Yes. I didn't All right. So you, put those, you tie those on your outfit, and you run that same 26-mile mm -hmm. marathon yeah. with two 25-pound plates on you. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to be able to finish. Nope. Okay, now, so I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute because it says it slows us down, especially, he then says, the sin that so easily trips us up. Now, I love how he says that because we as believers have to recognize what easily trips us up. Um, I think if somebody puts a line of cocaine in me, I will have absolutely no temptation. But I do know that I was a young man that had to get free from pornography when I was 25 years old, and you and I walked that through. That was a sin. Boy, you better believe I don't want to go anywhere near, anywhere near that. I mean, 
I could walk into a bar and not be tempted, but I and will never walk into a store that would have X-rated materials because I know that was something that took a all-out battle to get free from. Mm-hmm. And I think we as believers, one of the responsibilities we have to know is what is it that what is it that I'm more susceptible to be tempted by? And that you want to steer clear from. And sometimes they're not obvious things like alcohol or drug or even pornography. There could be gossip. Like, it could be pride. Pride. Yeah, it could be slander. Arrogance. Yeah. yeah, slander. Yep. And then he goes on to say, and let us run with endurance. And I love this word endurance, the race that God has set before us. So the key to finishing strong is endurance. And endurance is when you continue to do the same thing, no matter what the difficulty, hardship, or length of time that you are facing is. And this... The constancy. Con- consistency, constancy, both of those are ac- absolutely excellent words. Long suffering, mm-hmm. you suffer long. Mm-hmm. If you look at the word patience, it means what? It means you continue to do the same thing no matter what, how long the time period is you're waiting. And then if you look at endurance, it means you keep doing the same thing no matter what pressures are against you. Right. So one deals with time, one deals with pressures. Patience mm-hmm. deals with time, endurance deals with pressures. Wow. So this is why when people make New Year's resolutions, it doesn't last past January because what happens? Well, well it depends on the resolution. If yeah. I say my resolution is to enjoy espresso every single day. Oh, that's an I'm, easy I'm one. Gonna do You're that. not going to have any uh, resistance to that one, except maybe being in a hotel that doesn't have espresso. So here's the situation. We have to determine that we're going to finish no matter what comes against us, either time or pressures or hardships. And... In thinking about a race, Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, and so do you, that train for marathons. And how do they train for a marathon? They they run. (laughs) Well, first day they don't run 26 miles. They 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 run a half a mile. They they build up. Then they run a mile. Then they run. And if they skip that. And they go to the day of mar- the yeah, marathon race. Yeah, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. I tried that with a 5K. Did it's you? Not even really tell me about it. Let's, let's talk about this. I want to hear this story. I did not train at all. Yeah. I did not stretch ahead of time. I did not did not place well. I finished. Did you finish? I Yes, I finished. Good but job. I finished like one, in one of the last heats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. So... So I finished. What what a lot of people don't understand is we live in a life of we live that's filled with hardship. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. Okay, Jesus told us that. If you right. think you're going to go through this life without suffering hardship, without adversity, you are living in another world. Right. <laughs> All right. So even Jesus said to us, he promised, he said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Right. Now, I look at him. He endured hostility. And and that's why it says, looking unto Jesus, he endured such great hostility, but what caused him to endure it? It was his love for the holy fear of God. And for the promise set before him. And the promise. That he endured the cross. Yes. Yes. The promise set before him and his holy fear of God. So in other words, he said, I don't, the fear of God says, I don't want to be away from God. I don't want to be separate from him. Mm -hmm. And that loving, embracing, because he delighted, Isaiah 11 says, in the fear of the Lord, kept him on the race. But with each, the Bible says he actually learned obedience by what he suffered. So every trial that comes our way, if we look at it correctly, it's only a trial that prepares us for the next one. Wow. So just like the half mile prepares us for the mile. The half mile doesn't prepare us for the 26 mile. It prepares us for the mile. The mile prepares us for the two miles. The two miles prepares us for the three miles and so forth and so on. Right. When we complain, when we give up on a trial that we're presently in, we're actually risking our ability to endure to the end. Mm, the very next opportunity. We've, uh, we've compromised that training. Yes. Okay. Now, God doesn't author hardships. He doesn't author um, adversities. But he knows we live wait, in a wait, world. Wait, th- wait. What about the furnace of affliction? See, I disagree with you on that one. Okay. He says, I have refined you in the furnace of affliction. Okay, but I'm going to challenge back. Okay. And I'm going to say challenge that the back. Bible says, let no one say that when he's tested, he's tested of God because God can tempt no one with evil. Now. Yeah, but that's not evil. I'm going to I'm gonna submit this to you. Always I'm going to submit something else. The okay. furnace of affliction that you're talking about is God already knowing the end from the beginning and knowing what we'll go through in an evil world. 
So I'm going to give you an example. When Addison was in third grade and he was being bullied, we didn't pull him out of the school. We didn't go to the school and say, hey, to those bullies, hey, stop it. We gave him the wisdom he needed to face the bullies the next day. Right. And we sent him back to school. When I see God putting us in a furnace of affliction, I don't see him being the furnace. I see him saying, I'm going to allow you to go through this because I know the, yeah, the enemy's going to really try to do a number on you, but I know it's going to give you the spiritual muscles to handle the next thing I'm going to send you into. So he allows it, but he doesn't author it. He doesn't author it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so God knows the hardships that we're going to face. And if you and I look at some of the hardships we faced when we were in our 20s, we thought they were, we thought we were, we felt overwhelmed. We felt like we were going to sink yeah. at times. Yeah, we felt crushed. But we look at those things now in our 60s yeah. and we're laughing at it, thinking that's nothing we're compared to babies. what we faced yeah. in, in, in the decade of our 50s. Right. right. Well, I wonder what would have happened if we faced what we faced in the decade of our 50s when we were 20. We, I think it would it have taken us out. It would have taken us out. It would have been, it, yeah, we would have had to have other people help us very, like, hey, we're going to lift you up and carry you. Yeah. You know, when I was 35 years old, I set a goal to, to push up 200 or 315 pounds. That was my goal. I wanted to bench press 315 pounds. It took seven years, Lisa. Wow. Because I started at 95. That was the most I could do. And then it went up to 125, 135, 145, and it kept going up over seven years until I finally pushed up that 315 pounds. If my friend would have put the 315 pounds on the bar the first day, and when he let go of that bar, that bar would have come down and killed me. It would have crushed my chest and killed me. Mm -hmm. I had to build up to that. What if I would would have forsaken the ability to get up to that level by just going, you know what, I'm just going to stay at 95. I'm so Mm -hmm. fed up with this. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stay. I know I can handle this. God will never allow anything to come against us that he knows we can't handle. 1 Corinthians 10 promises that. But let's handle it with the grace he gives us and finish well. Right. But the beautiful thing was that potential was always in you, but it had to be developed. You had the potential to, to lift up 315, but not, you know, all, you didn't get added. You built on what you already had. You built the muscles you had. So I love that, that when we do it correctly, each trial adds strength and adds endurance. And I also want to go back to what you said about, you know, casting aside every weight and sin that besets us or trips us up. You know, it's interesting. You're talking about an endurance run. And one of the scriptures I don't think people think of immediately when we think of endurance is where it says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, that word abide means to endure. Oh, wow. To endure. I didn't know that. Yeah, it doesn't just mean you know, live attached to, it actually means to endure. So if the word has endurance and that you endure, because we also see he who endures to the end shall be saved. So that abiding, when I looked it up, when I was writing on Adam, I found a a connection between abide and endure. Wow. It's crazy. I, I I didn't know that. I should have read Adam. Yeah. I thought I did. You did not. I must not have remembered you, you, that. You, it, it just hit you, me now after our... Probably just read a, like a paragraph. You, you, you know what people tell me? They tell me when they read anointed books that God has anointed, they'll go back two years later and get something out of it they didn't get. So I guess I wasn't ready for that, that you are. amazing revealed word from heaven. But boy, it just hit me now. You That's amazing. So okay. But going back to those heroes in faith who died never receiving the promise. That's what it says. But it's crazy. It says they saw the promise at a distance. And these are our witnesses that they're saying, come on, come on, it's worth it. Run well. Throw aside those weights. Stop playing around with those things that are going to trip you up. Run your life well. I love how we see Hebrews 11 and Hebrews 12 as this echo of endurance and legacy and worth. And I I just feel like it's such an invitation, not for just to finish the year strong, but to live a life that builds strength consistently. Yeah. You know, and I I just want to address, let's just address the yearly goals. (laughs) A lot of you that are listening to us, you made some resolutions back in January 1 or December 31, whatever it is, 30 or 31. Let's just call them wish illusions. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you didn't 
you dropped the ball, you got down. So why don't we try picking that list back up and getting through the rest of the year with that list? Because let me tell you what that will do. So train at the end of the year? So in other year? words, yes. So in other words, this is what it'll do. When you're in January and you end up missing a day and then a second day, you give up. You're like, oh, it's all done now, right? Why don't you just form the habit? That's the more important thing, the godly habit. And if you do it now and you miss a few days, you're not going to go, oh, I blew the whole year. You're going you're gonna to pick it back up again between now and December 31st, and you'll start developing a habit. I mean, there are experts that say if you do something 21 straight days, it now becomes a firm fixture in your life, right? And you and I love Atomic Habits, which talks yeah, about we listen to that layering book together. the habits you already have with a new habit you yeah. want to do. So, all right, JB, what's going to be your finish strong the year habit? <clears throat> My finish strong the year habit... You know, I'm glad you challenged me with that because I haven't thought that through. But I, I just I had that come. That. I had that come up in my heart while we were. I didn't know I was going to talk about it while we were while we were talking about this because I want to see people get some positive feedback to their to themselves between now and the end of the well, year. And December can go crazy on a lot of people. Yeah, it becomes just chaos and mayhem of shopping and just ah. Uh, and I'm hoping in this different time period where there's a little bit more of a pause and honoring of family and an awareness of those who don't have family, who have lost family, who are alone. Maybe we could develop a habit of other awareness instead of just self-awareness. Yeah, Maybe that's that'd be very a good, good way to end the year. That'd be, that'd be good. But just want to encourage you, if, you're, if your goal was to read four chapters in the Bible a day and you blew it after a week Start and you gave up, yeah. hey, Start with two chapters now and do it every day and just sit there and go, you know what? If I miss a day in December, big deal. But I'm going to develop this habit. Start, start getting this thing rolling. By the time January 1 comes in, I'm going to try my four chapters a day. I'm going to get through the Bible next year. I love that. Yeah. I love that. You know, John, I, I really love practicalities. And here's three steps to finishing well. I love so it. So finishing well this year, but these are just finishing well, period. So number one. Make a plan. John just talked about, hey, you're going to do four chapters. Make a plan. Write it down. Habakkuk 2.2 two says, write the vision, make it plain on tables so he may run who reads it. So if it doesn't have clarity, if it's not written down, you can forget things. I don't know how many times I've had a great idea and I don't write it down and I forget it. So mm -hmm. write it down, make it clear, make it simple, make it easy to just pass through and see it. Number two, keep your faith up by declaring God's promises and prayers. And one of the things you said is even if you're in a season where God's promises seem empty and void to me, then declare the faithfulness of God. But I love this. First Corinthians 1 20 says, for all the promises of God find their yes in him. Who's that in him? In Christ. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. So love that. Third one, don't grow weary in well-doing. So what does that mean? Don't get tired. Don't think this isn't doing any good. Don't think nobody sees what I'm doing. Don't think I'm just going to blow it again. Don't grow weary. Why? You don't grow weary because we're promised in Galatians 6, 9, and let us not grow weary in doing good for in the due season, we will reap if we don't give up. So if you give up, you never get your due. You never find out what would happen. Yep. You, you'd never find out what would happen if you kept weeding and watering and tending. You lose that. I mean, can you imagine a farmer who goes out there and plants, plows first, plants, fertilizes, weeds, does all this work, and then the month of the harvest, he goes, you know what, I'm just... I'm not seeing a I'm lot tired. of progress. I'm tired. Yeah. I don't see a lot of fruit on the plants. I'm going to I'm going to give up. And he walks away. You know that fruit doesn't show up usually until much much later. I, there are some fruit that doesn't show up until actually the final month before the harvest comes. Mm -hmm. That plant just has to grow grow grow. I mean, I look at corn stalks, they don't look very big in July, but they eventually get very tall and have a lot of corn on them. And we just have wait, to wait. They're tall in July, shoulder high by oh, the you know fourth what? of I, July. I, I'm I grew like, what are you, you saying? know what's amazing? What? I didn't realize that. Yeah. I grew up in Michigan. You know what Michigan statement is? No. Knee high by fourth of July. Maybe it is knee high, and I'm making that up. <laughs> I thought it was shoulder. Well, I'm high. just wondering. Maybe maybe a warmer climate maybe down there you in Indiana. Have it wrong. 
No, I don't. I remember it very well. Okay. But uh, the we're farmers gonna, tell me. There's going to be a Google search after this oh, podcast. Oh, I might so be in gonna, trouble. We might come Google. back on the next podcast and give you the correct information on that. Oh, my god! But here's the deal, Lisa. I, I just want to believe that everybody listening to us today will be strengthened in your heart yeah. to run this race with endurance. Yeah. And know you're not alone. Yep. And there was a time where Paul said, I actually wanted to die. Second Corinthians chapter one, he said the adversity was so bad, I wanted to die. But he said, I found comfort in the one who comforts us. And he said, in finding that comfort, now I've been able to comfort others in their tribulation. This world has tribulation. And so one of the things we have to always make sure that we do is not get people to avoid the adversity, but to confront it and walk through it. And I think that, you know, if you look at, if you look at the apostle Paul, God tells him, you know, through a, through a vision. I mean, he literally has a vision, a night vision of a man from Macedonia and saying, come on, come on over here. And they had been trying to find the will of God. And they went, oh my gosh, this is great. That's it. And they go over to Macedonia. And before the day's out, he's in, in a dungeon. He's in a dungeon. Oh, I miss God. No, you didn't miss God, Paul. God, he, he kept the right attitude. So what's he doing in this dungeon? He could be sitting there going, I can't believe we came to Macedonia. Just think we'd be free outside preaching the gospel to other cities if we went to other cities. No, he knew he was supposed to go there. So you know what he started doing? He started praising God. Yep. And when he got to that point, God inhabited his praises, shook the dungeon. The jailer ends up getting saved. Yeah. It has a big move of God in that area. So you have to remember, you're going to run into adversity even when God tells you to do something very specific. So adversity doesn't always mean that you're going the wrong way. No, Sometimes it, it means yeah. you're going the right you're way. You're going the right way. Okay, so I hope you've heard what John has been saying. I hope you understand this isn't about a year of failure. I don't care how you started. It's how you finish. So you can finish strong. You can finish strong by day. You can finish one just an hour like young mamas they're like i'm just gonna finish this hour well i'm gonna not yell i'm gonna survive or you can just say i'm gonna start preparing now in december for finishing strong well actually starting strong so we can finish strong in 2022 i there love that all right we wanted to thank you for tuning in please please remember rate review subscribe to the show when you do this it actually helps us get the message out to even more people. That's if true. you haven't already, and I don't know why, we have said this so many times, if you haven't already, <laughs> please download the Messenger X app. It's gotten even more amazing, John. People can uh -huh. actually do studies with people. I don't want people to say, I can't be, I just don't want to do the app because it's by myself. No, it's not by myself. You can actually go through the Bait of Satan study. You can go through uh, Called. You can go through Moms and Men. You can do friends. different things and you can share it with your friends and it's super easy. It is not complicated. So download Messenger X app. There's no space between Messenger and X and it is free on Google Play, Android, or you can, I mean, Google, that is Android, right? Mm -hmm. On Apple, or you can go app to uh, the App Store. That, yeah. Thank you. I got yes, confused there. Fine. Uh, and they could just, or if they're like, I don't have a phone, then they can, MessengerX.com. They can do that. Right. Okay. And right now you can get all the books and workbooks in our store, listen to this. You're like, no, no, I want something physical. 50% off during the Christmas special. Maybe you're struggling to find a perfect gift for your friends or family. This year, you could actually help them dive deeper into a specific topic like strong or God, where are you? Or for a limited number of time, you get any messenger resource at half the cost. That's amazing. So just go to store.messengerinternational.org to get the deal. We also have the link in the show notes. And so until next time, this has been Conversations with Lisa and John Bevere. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations with John and Lisa Bevere. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you love to listen. Also, if you haven't already, go right ahead and download Messenger X to hear more content from John and Lisa Bevere and other great messengers. Again, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Conversations with John and Lisa.